Don't you just hate it when you have something all set, ready to go, and it just doesn't work? Even as a senior developer, having that one last thing that I forgot can be ridiculously maddening. And this, my friends, is one of those very specific situations that has hit me across the side of the head more often than I would care to admit. You see, we're going to talk about creating a new customer attribute. Yeah, that's commonplace. Like it's something we probably do every day, but there's a catch. This is not creating like creating a product attribute. Well, it actually is. There's just that one more step we have to take here. Let's look at our question here for this week's Knowledge Byte. You are working on a Magenta open source website. I call out open source because you can create attributes in the admin panel on commerce. However, you still shouldn't just create attributes in the admin panel if they're actually using the code, right? You see what I'm saying there? So um, it could also apply to uh, commerce as well. Anyways, uh, you are tasked with creating a customer attribute called customer rep ID. Now, uh, this attribute is successfully created in your data patch. Well done. However, this patch is not visible in the form when creating a new customer. So how do you resolve this problem? Again, it's one of those, sh shoot, why? What happened is happening here. So let's look at three different options like I always like to do. And we're going to see if we can identify the right uh, solution here to the problem. From memory, let's see if we can do this. Okay, here we go. All right, A, you need to assign this attribute through the admin panel in the customer attributes section. B, create a plugin for the class that fetches customer attributes to include your attribute in the results. Or C, create a new patch to inject the attributes ID into the uh, customer form attributes table. All right, one of these three options here. Let's see what the answer is. A, uh, you need to assign this attribute through the admin panel in the customer attributes section. Uh, that's, well, open source, that's just not a thing. In commerce, there's no attribute sets. It's kind of talking about attribute sets, kind of. So, yeah, that's not really a thing either. So, while this sounds like a nicely plausible answer, nope, it's not. So, we can just kind of uh, move on from this one. The second one, create a plugin for the class that fetches customer attributes to include your attribute in the results. Now, we have to think about this. Um, when loading a customer via the customer repository, a pet peeve of mine is that all attributes are loaded. Now, it's a pet peeve of mine because historically it's been a performance problem. Um, however, I think there's sufficient argument, perhaps, that it doesn't affect performance that much, but I think we s it, it does. It really does. So, um, this is, again, coming back to understanding the, the inner workings of Adobe Commerce. If we agree that the, the inner workings actually load all attributes, which, again, using a repository, customer repository interface, then yes, that would, although you can bypass that by using a collection and using the add attributes to select option, which we work to, um, then, yeah, that would possibly, but no, no that, that's just, it's not a viable answer because, again, for the most, in the most part, Magento is loading in all attributes. Uh, so this, this really isn't, it's kind of borrowing from product, honestly, uh, the pro, how the products work. And there is some nuance there in how that works. But let's look at answer C, which, yeah, you probably guessed right now, that is the correct answer. And I'm going to give you the reason as far as why this is the correct answer. I don't like just saying, yeah, it's the correct answer. And we go from there. We have to look and see why this is. So to understand why this is, Let's go look at the code, the Adobe Commerce code. This is always the source of what, what I always go to to identify answers to my problems. Take a look here. All right, so we are in the, <clears throat> I have a few files open here. We are in the uh, customer module and we can drop down here to set up patch data. And to be frank, as we were preparing for this question, I was literally looking through some of these, these uh, classes in here. It's a great way to get familiar with uh, Adobe Commerce. I highly recommend it. Now, we see right here in this uh, default customer groups and attributes class, so it's pretty easy to find, uh, we have a VAT ID uh, attribute set data used in forms, et cetera. Now, what's fascinating here is there is no used in forms uh, setting on an attribute. It just doesn't exist because then it's obviously being saved out here. But what is happening 
is right here. We have uh, our data um, pulling, it's ripping out the, uh, the used in forms, and it's actually, again, following this train of thought through here, it's adding it to the customer form attribute table, which this table is right here. So the that's how we came to this answer, the customer form attributes table. Now, on the surface, it does seem to be a, a, a value or a setting for a given attribute. That is not the case. It is actually uh, some helper code. So the correct answer, as we have defined here, is create a new patch to inject the attributes ID into the customer form attributes table. That, my friends, is the correct answer. You can choose to use the Magento shortcut. I I, I question you whether how valuable those are because again, this is this is the source of the data. This is how it all goes down at the end of the day. So um, it's not like we're having to rely on maybe some other process or something to make this actually happen. We can inject it right into the data source. Now, obviously, I'm not saying this is a rule across the board for everything, right? Uh, injecting an actual attribute into the EAV attributes and the EAV attribute set and the EAV, uh, and the catalog uh, attribute EAV catalog EAV attribute table. I mean, there's there's a lot that would take to do that. So we want to use automation in some cases, but in a case like this where we see how it all fits together, shoot, why not just throw it in the customer attribute form table, form attribute table, and we are good to go. So there is your answer. When that stupid attribute doesn't show up on the customer registration or the customer page in one way or another, it's probably because it's not in customer form attribute. There is your knowledge bite for this week.